So transitional fracture essentially means you are transitioning, becoming adult. So although sometimes you may see the pattern of fracture similar to what was presented earlier on, but the age is totally different. So therefore, don't think so much of uh, growth arrest because these are very, very close to maturity. So you won't get so much of, uh, in terms of length difference, but more importantly, you, you really hub on how your articular congruity, you know, I think the take home message here is really you have to get a precise sort of like um, reduction. So we all know that um, um, distal tibia 11 to 25 percent of this and uh, as I mentioned early on really uh, by then you really have very minimal longitudinal growth so uh, don't think of growth arrest being the problem. Yeah and um, they're only about 5 to 10 percent so that's why earlier I mentioned you don't get to see a lot in your practice unless you work in a solid children hospital and this is something that we always ask uh, medical students distal tibia physis close you know centrally antromedially and then finally laterally that's why you got telos uh, fracture at last so this is a typical picture you get to see how the physis close all the way from you know medial come to lateral and finally close that's why your telo patient had to be the oldest uh, compared to a uh, triplane all right so this is a typical picture you get to see this and that's how it's like and and that would be more in telos well uh, for triplane um, you know typically for the two parts you get to see sort of sort of Harris 3 on AP and sort of Harris 2 on the lateral view and I uh, used to teach my residents this horrible maths uh, 2 plus 3 equal to 4 yeah simply because uh, when 2 plus 3 it behaves like a, a bad uh, type 4 kind of thing so you must treat it like type 4 as in you must get it like a proper um, sort of like proper reduction yeah all right, so this is how you look like in a triplane. It look like a, a, a sort of like a three on your AP view, but will be a two on your lateral views. Therefore, two plus three equal to four. So diagnosis, typically patient come in twisting, pain, swelling, and can't wait bare. And you may even get the skin problem sometimes and look at the nerve as well. So I think this probably is the single most important thing and almost always you do a nice x-ray and do a, a mortise view as well and uh, you, you may get the 18% uh, kind of false negative but uh, by and large no complex fracture will be missed. However, I think almost all these cases once you are thinking of surgical intervention and you any doubt I think CT scan is uh, asked for. Uh, MRI doesn't change too much of a treatment plan, but CT is certainly uh, very useful. And uh, simply because plain x-ray, sometimes you cannot see very well. Well, CT uh, definitely help you to plan your surgery. And uh, a lot of time you see this very characteristic Mercedes-Benz thing. Yeah. Okay, so this is how you look like, your CT, uh, TLO will be like that and uh, triplane, you know, a lot of time you get this um, you get this, this type 3, type 2 and you know, and a bit more complex almost like a type 4 lateral view and then you get to see this uh, sort of Mercedes-Benz kind of picture alright, so you get to see like that three points and then type 3 and then type 2 on lateral view so remember always 2 plus 3 equal to 4 yeah. Right, so sometimes you get very um, a bit more. Um, they call it like three parts, not just uh, two, and so there's more complex kind of triplane. So that's why you you really need CT scan to look at them. Yeah, so this is a nice one, uh, two parts. So later I will show you what you mean by two part. You get to appreciate uh, just two parts and type three. Uh, on the epiphysis part and type 2 on the lateral view so you get to see and this is one uh, was not frequently mentioned in typical talk 
And I found that in practice is the one that you really need to notice because a lot of them, uh, they get this uh, in the triplane, they get this uh, intra so articular in the epiphysis and sometimes they get this extra articular meaning outside that and one more would be intra malleolar. So I would really uh, like you to appreciate this when you go back for your practice after today. Uh, look at the C scan more critically and you realize there is a subtle difference between these three components. It's nice when you uh, fix the screw. So I hope this is the... I, I don't know whether Teddy was here in Goa not long ago. I don't know whether he has shown this before. Uh, yeah, this is something that you, you, I really advise you to have that. Uh, but sometimes not easy to cut this because it's saw bone and you try to use a knife to cut and you really get to appreciate this. So on the, so you can see this is a two-part triplane. Okay, so this is how you look like in the, uh, from a di different point of view. Okay, I, I think this is probably is the single most important concept in dealing with a triplane. You should uh, uh, do it in your mind. You can see. Uh, from the front, you get to see a uh, sort of type 3 and then from the side, you get to see a uh, type 2 and then as you open up, then you get to appreciate ha, ah, they are actually two parts, they are in communication with each other and the epiphysis, that's where the type 3 comes out and then at the metaphysis, you have type 2 like that, okay? So I, I think I hope all of you, before you do a triplane, try to get this model into your mind so that when you fix things, then you appreciate why the screw had to go certain direction. So this screw, obviously, when you in a coronal plane, fracture like that, you have to go this way. And uh, from a sagittal plane, the metaphysis is go from front to back or back to front. All right? So that's how it's like. So treatment will be usually used at 2mm and you can do various ways uh, depending how comfortable you are. You can do a close with arthroscopy assisted or you can do open. So typical scenario, this is a nice uh, t low fracture in the kit. So, and then um, you can make it a big like this or you can do a scope. Uh, you can do the screw fixation. All right, so essentially, it's a very oblique screw from uh, oblique across. So on AP view, you look as if it's completing, and the lateral view, it go from front to back. Yeah, and then for triplane, similarly, that's how you approach. You can enter laterally, enter medially, and then the uh, very important, uh, you you are really concerned about the articular congruity and know so much about the uh, uh, physis in terms of length. So this is what uh, K. Wilkins will show you that how you appreciate um, epiphysis. So remember, I, I showed the model early on. Uh, that's how the CT scan would look like. And this will be a sort of like a sagittal kind of um, fragment. And then you need to fix them that way. And for metaphysis, you get the metaphysis image from front to back because it's showing you a sort of like coronal split. So therefore, your fixation had to be that way, from metaphysis front to back, uh, epiphysis side to side. All right. So almost you to remember this, and sometimes arthrogram is added. So this is a bit more uh, complex. Some, I told you before, you can be a sort of like intra uh, intra articular or intra malleolar uh, extra articular extension. So you need to do it this way again, you know, front to back and side to side, okay. And an, an another case, and this is what uh, earlier I mentioned about cases like this. Really watch out for uh, interposition, and otherwise, when you force it in, and you realize that the foot is great pain and lots of trouble. So you really had to go and uh, gently and do it open and get the periosteum out of the way. Okay, and this is one I mentioned to you about. You have this extension across, we call the intra malleolar. Yeah. So you do be very careful when you fix that that way. Same principle. 
associated injury, a lot of time you have uh, associated fibular injury. So uh, uh, very common, you got almost like a Weber C. So when you fix this way, and you're having done a triplane, and are you going to do this? How many? So again, option here, A and B. How many? Uh, how many will fix like this? Uh, a Weber C after fixing triplane, put a plate on the fibula. That's A. How many will leave the fibula alone? Answer B. Okay, A hands up. B hands up. Okay, so you can see that the. The faculty all put B, right? So never do it uh, this way because this is what exactly what your adult surgeons would do. Okay. The reason is uh, you look at earlier on the case where um, actually the other case saw sort of like demonstrate to you, you do not need to. There was a fibula fracture as well. You don't need to do a fibula at all because after that you test stability because purely this is a tibia fracture. Okay. So don't treat it like an ankle fracture per se. Yeah, so don't do that x ray. Of course, you get mesial nerve and also you get fracture shaft. Then then you have to attract you do both. Yeah, remember, you have to do your triplane below and try to get your uh, uh, flexible nail more open up. Yeah, not don't 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 curve like that. That's less than ideal. Okay? But usually you need to do both um, for tibia fracture and the uh, uh, shaft at the same time. So uh, outcome by and large is quite uh, decent and uh, uh, as, I, as I emphasize again, rarely uh, they have any uh, length problem because it's very, very near maturity. So remember you need to do it uh, nicely in terms of uh, congruency. That's why don't get the residues or displacement because otherwise you, you end up in trouble, all right? So this is, um, okay, time's up. So remember, uh, get the um, CT scan and to aid you in doing this. Thank you very much.